You're listening. You're listening. You're listening to the International The International International. The International Positive Positive Podcast Podcast Network. Network. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know if it was a monster truck, but it'd pick up trucks and then eat them or set them on fire, which was awesome. I can't even focus. I don't even want to do a podcast anymore. I just want to like browse <laughs> the the monster truck wiki. <laughs> <laughs> because of course there's a monster truck wiki. Welcome to Three Guys, Three Questions, where three friends test the limits of propriety through the questions we ask. Today is International Nationalism Day, and this is episode five of season five. This week, we're sponsored by the North American Society of Pre-Vexillologist Wannabes. I'm Aaron L.M. Goodwin, and I'm joined as always by Andrew Savage. Say hello, Andrew. Hey. That's all I got. All right. I'm also joined by Adam Hot Mess Anderson. Hello, everyone. This is a hot mess. You uh, you capitalize hot mess like you're the hot mess. Are you suggesting that I'm not the hot mess? Um, so I'm not familiar with hot mess because it's just not a term I use. So what does it actually even mean? I'm legitimately asking. I'm pretty sure it means that I there is literally nothing in my life that I have together, but I'm still sexy. Oh, I think it's just when you don't like you haven't like you're un you're unkept, but you still look good. Oh, see. Okay, so I just want to inform you guys what I think of when I hear hot mess. Is it come out of a body? It is It is just a, a steaming turd that's like a literal hot mess. Well, anything like spilled soup could be technically a hot mess. Right. right. As long as it just came off the stove. <clears throat> All right, well, let's do the show. <laughs> if you're new to the show, here's how it works. Three guys talk about poop. <laughs> All right, it always like- ends up there, but we don't. we try not to start. Right. Right. We try to make sure it happens at least number two. Oh. <laughs> that was a little forced. <laughs> like a, a little two. constipated. <laughs> yeah. I'm so disappointed in all of you. Nah, you love us. If you're new to the show, here's how it works. Each host asks a question, then each host gives their answer. Hilarity hopefully ensues, and we move to the next question. I have today's first question, so I'm going to give it to you, if that is okay. Oh, yeah, it. I mean, I guess it's fine. Well, you do what good. you want. Good. I was going to do it anyway. You do you, Aaron. You do oh, you. Okay. What belief makes no sense to you? No sense. I was going to answer this question like broadly like and, and just lambast an entire section of our populace, but then I realized that that might make a lot of people very angry. Right. And then, so, so I thought of a better answer. I was in a, this building on campus the other day. And I was just sitting, pretending to do homework, but doing something else. And I overheard this conversation between this girl and and the friend that she was with. And she looks at him and she goes, you know what? I just can't decide between Ben Carson and Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. And that is the least sensical thing I think I've ever heard in my entire life. It's They're the two most different people probably on the planet, let alone (laughs) running for president. It's like saying, oh, I can't decide if I like Hitler or Gandhi better. We're not going to say, yeah. Um, you decide who is who. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to assign characters, but, you know. But Hitler wasn't black is all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> the thing is, I cannot for the life of me fathom what they share in common that none of the other candidates do. Does that make sense? Like why, why is the choice between them? What is the, the th- the thing that she's like, well, they're both basically this way, except for this one exception. I can't figure it out. I don't know. Like, the only thing that makes that could make sense is that she's at some sort of crossroads in her life. <clears throat> and she's like, I can't decide if I want to be a terrible person in this way or a terrible person in this other way. What I don't understand, it's not even really like a crossroads because, like, y- you know, you you turn left, you go one way, you, you know, you can always turn back and go the other way. So I think... I think this is what it is. But this is no, this is like she's like jumping from a plane between choosing between like two islands. Like she's like <laughs> skydiving and she's going to choose one island or the other. It's like I can't decide between being a bird or being a fish. Why not be a flying fish? I don't know. <laughs> 
I think it's just a person that just realizes that they don't want to choose the two of the most hated people on the planet. And this is their other choices. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder if she wasn't even talking about politics. Is that possible? Like maybe is that slang for something? Is, maybe she was talking about some, like some sort of man crush she was having. Maybe she was talking about like a homework assignment. <laughs> like, like she like has she to has profile to, a politician. Like, I'm not sure who I'd rather be have my, as my grandfather. <laughs> I'm getting adopted today, but I get to choose who my parent will be. I mean, you know. <laughs> wow. <I> choose. <laughs> that would be it. Now that would be a hard choice. Yeah. I, I can mean, see the benefits of either. But I mean, can yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's obviously not voting. It can't be. It can't it be. cannot be. Oh. There's it's not like, even the it's just two different sides of a coin. Yeah, I mean it's it's a Venn diagram that it's that's just two separate circles. <laughs> the sharing ones is they're both men. That's the only thing that I, guess. I don't know. <laughs> Man. Yeah, well, um, I'm not going to say anything else because I, I I can't think of anything else to say that won't offend somebody. Yeah, it's... Oh, man. I mean, that's never really stopped me before, but... <laughs> I have that same approach towards discussing politics on Facebook, which is I just don't do it. And I don't understand people that do also. Right. I, that's another thing. That's another thing that makes no sense to me. It's like, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to tell all of my friends who are firmly entrenched in their ideologies exactly how I think using this meme. I I think for most people, they assume that most of their friends and family believe the same thing as they do. So it's not so much as, here, let me inform you via this JPEG. It is, <laughs> here, let us rally the troops with this gif, you know? <laughs> Or or it could be like, oh man, I found it. This is the final nail in the coffin. This will prove <laughs> anyone that they're wrong. I don't think it's usually that. I don't, Take don't know. Take this, libtards. Because <laughs> they probably don't think, because I don't think, I don't think that many people would be that, that purposefully like combative. Does that make sense? They might be stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they probably <laughs> are. But, well, if they're discussing politics on Facebook, then yeah, but I don't think they're like trying to convince people. I just I don't know. I don't think most people are like that because because if they are, that's the worst way to go about it. I don't discuss politics on Facebook, but I discuss things that I forget are political, but they're actually like important things, right? <laughs> you know, like gun control. See how I can. I can see how it's you would be confused that those aren't like the same thing because a lot of <laughs> politicians don't talk about important things. <laughs> well, it's it's just frustrating because I'll bring up something that I think everybody can get behind, you know? Like I'll I'll be like this is a problem and and this is my opinion about this thing and what do you guys think? And then and then someone says something and I'm and I just like highlight what they say and do a Google search and it just automatically forwards me to like the Fox News or MSNBC websites. Yeah, because it's just like talking points from <laughs> their mass media choice. Uh, and and I just like I didn't realize this issue was going to be political because once it's political, you can't have an actual argument. You just have a yelling match. And I don't want that. I try not to have political co conversations on Facebook because I realize they're just futile, but I always get dragged into it because apparently a lot of stuff is very political. I don't know. I just, I kind of want to pick the brain of somebody who, who like posts, posts like, or somebody, I want to pick the brain of somebody who participates in these mimetic politics that you find on Facebook. Did you just use the word mimetic? Yeah. Is that, I think it's pronounced meme. <sighs> <laughs> I was using it as an adjective. Mimetic? So, no. Yeah. Vexillogically. <laughs> Vexillological <laughs> politics. Me I'm ready Mimetical. to take a nap now. We're not even finished ah, the first question. <laughs> we're, we're not even the first answer. So, Andrew, <laughs> what's your answer? What belief makes no sense to you? I don't like, I guess this is one, one thing that doesn't make sense. I guess it's kind of political, but I just don't understand why some people are so opinionated. Have you, wait. <laughs> and when I say opinionated, it's. It's good to have opinions, but I think people hold on to their opinions like a religious belief, but worse. Well, here's the thing, Andrew. My opinions are definitively the best opinions I've ever had, so. <laughs> but see, that <laughs> statement alone conveys a lot of truth because you didn't say my opinions are the best opinions, period. Right. I, you said, I, I did this opinion, on purpose. My opinions are the best opinions I've ever had. <laughs> and I think- 
the fact that your opinions have changed elucidates a truth. And I think the problem is, is people's opinions. I feel like there's like a sense of weakness if your opinion changes. And I don't understand that because when new information is gathered, a new opinion is made. Right. That's just the nature of well, intelligence. I mean, that's just your opinion, man. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people walk around l- like living life as a as a PR agency for themselves. <laughs> right. And their whole thought, their whole subconscious, everything going through their head is as though they they were running a campaign that they needed to watch every single little thing they did. Yes. And so I think they're just so afraid. So you're saying most people have an anxiety disorder. <laughs> I I wouldn't be surprised if that's true, but um <laughs> I think to some degree, yeah, people people are just like very, very nervous about their appearance. Right. Um and so they 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 don't want to show the weakness, supposedly, of being wrong. Or flip flopping or something like that, which is just like insane because it, you're you're not allowing yourself to be a real human. I hate the term flip flop because it's like, oh man, he changes his decisions. I'm like, well, yeah, that's probably a good thing, right? And I prefer it as opposed to thong because because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can go with sandal, but but you know what I mean. Like I I the thing is is like as someone who decides that when new information is gathered they're like oh well my opinions changed because i now have a clear information right but i think for many t- people they feel i don't i don't want to like d- like they like they huddle in corners and gossip like hey you see that guy over there his opinions changed when he information <laughs> well i don't think that happens but i think people think that happens <laughs> yeah it doesn't happen that's what's funny is like nobody remembers what someone said 5 minutes ago let alone 10 years ago like unless that's what makes callbacks so hard in a podcast (laughs) (laughs) every everyone's like it's just funny how everyone's living this weird life where they assume they're like the hero of a story and everyone else are side players and or villains are you suggesting i'm not the protagonist no you are definitely not (laughs) i don't think any of us are really i don't know i just like i just think stop trying so hard (laughs) (laughs) period just Just period I don't know. <laughs> Just live and let rant. live. So that's uh, that's what I don't understand. So you would sum up that you don't understand this this I don't know this diehard like never back down attitude towards an opinion or personal thought. Yeah, and then people start they get in these arguments and they say utterly ridiculous things. Right. That it's like, do you, I wish I had like a time machine and I could be like, I'm gonna go show this to future you. <laughs> How much you want to bet he's going to be so upset? <laughs> yeah, I like. I wish I could help you understand this, Andrew. But we're we're just we're, all of us here are all so enlightened that we cannot understand <laughs> something so dumb. There, well, okay, good. I, I, that was a joke that. about us. I don't, well, I, um. So speaking of enlightenment, um, <laughs> my the thing that. The belief that makes no sense to me. This is going to cause, this is going <laughs> to ruffle some feathers. There's going to be a rift here. <laughs> and it's, I want to put this right up front. This will be the, the great 3G, 3Q schism. This is going to be our last episode. Pretty much. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think people that hold this belief are bad people. I don't think they're stupid. I just don't think the reasons that people hold this belief that they usually say make any sense at all. You can hold this belief. That's cool. I have no problem with that. So what you're saying is that you're smarter than everyone who believes this. I don't think I'm smarter than everybody who <laughs> believes in this. You just don't agree with them is what you're, you're saying. You're more enlightened. No, it's not even that I don't agree. I just, I don't think the reason people believe this is usually the reason they give for believing that. And it'll make sense once I tell you that what I'm talking about is veganism. So... I don't want to talk about veganism as like a health thing because like, yeah, people who eat fruits and vegetables a bunch are probably going to be healthier than people that eat Big Macs. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of a non-starter argument. Like, yeah, of course, that's (laughs) of course, that's true. Um, However, on that front, I'll just put it out there that a lot of people I know who are vegans don't eat fruits and vegetables. They eat processed soy protein versions of meat. (laughs) <laughs> or just peanut butter. <laughs> like I knew this guy who was a vegan and he just ate peanut butter sandwiches, not even jelly. 
It was just two pieces of bread in between which he spread roughly half a jar of peanut butter. Wait, oh. was he was he a vegan or just in college? You could. <laughs> so, I'll say this: like you were saying, like obviously someone who eats Big Macs all the day is not going to be healthy. But I would say the same thing about someone who is vegan is probably not very healthy either. I think I've has- known a lot more healthy vegans. Than- no, that's probably true. <laughs> you but, know what I mean? But I usually like a person most- who makes that choice is health conscious, right? Right. I just feel like the most healthy would probably be somewhere in between. Right. You know, maybe something like human beings evolved to do, perhaps? Some yeah. sort of like, <laughs> some sort of like both carnivor- carnivorous and herbivorous, some sort of om- om- omni eating. To me, it's almost like, like, like whales who are like, oh, I only eat seaweed. I don't eat plankton. <laughs> and it's like you're a freaking whale like you're, the whole the whole shape of the front part of your body is built that way because you're supposed to eat plankton my like, favorite argument for it is like oh well back in the day they didn't they just ate fruits and vegetables all the time i'm like also back in the day people had 50 percent mortality rate during births well, like, I mean, yeah I but even really even then back, back in that. the day people ate meat like yeah. <laughs> that's not true that people didn't eat meat but my my thing that i don't get about it is most people not most okay i'll take that back a lot of people who are vehement veganism people they they say, oh, I just, I, I, I think it's immoral to cause so much suffering for animals. Um, Here's the thing. I can, I can understand that argument, but I do not agree with it. Does that make sense? I can't understand that. Arg- I can understand aspects of that argument. So, for instance, if you've ever seen a feedlot and you've seen how conf- confined feedlot places work for, for, for instance, beef or for chicken, it's disgusting. And yeah, it's, it's yes, yes, that is that is most definitely immoral because you're causing all kinds of pain and suffering for these animals. It's bad news for nuggets, pretty much. Well, and when you think that we waste like tons and tons of our food, it's it's needless, really. You know what I mean? It's all for low prices and, and convenience. You know what I mean? Yep. I understand that. But here's the thing. They pretend that there's like absolutely no consequences to growing vegetables, <laughs> which is dumb <laughs> because of everything you do in life, there's consequences you can't just do something and say, well, well, this thing is, is holy and, and, and nothing bad ever could happen from growing a carrot. But that's not true because when you farm, you plow a field, <laughs> what lived in that field before you took it up to grow carrots? You know what I mean? Yeah. You're killing all kinds of wildlife. What about the insects you keep off of your <laughs> Right. What about the field mice that you're crushing with your tractor as you're going <laughs> over? I mean, their life doesn't count. <laughs> I don't know. I've never I've never looked at the like looked at a cornfield and thought, this is ruining the planet. Well, here's the thing. Well, it actually is, but we can talk about that later. Because the the amount of petroleum that it takes to fertilize that field you know to to process the the fertilizers that are used on that field the amount of petroleum that it takes to operate the machinery that takes care of that field that harvests everything the amount that it takes to transport that food to refrigerate all that stuff that all has consequences (laughs) <laughs> that kill things like actually human lives in 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 the Middle East because we need that oil. You know what I mean? Like the the more you talk, the more I feel myself drifting into this dietary nihilism. Or it's just like I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Ollie, whatever. So, <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm here to do. <laughs> so there was a time in which I helped my uncle work on a farm, and I will tell you, there is no protection of animals there. <laughs> one of my one of my favorite and I'm doing air quotes you can't see because it's a podcast. One of my favorite parts of I think every, I could feel them. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> but my favorite part is in the morning we have to move pipe. And what that means is there's like a sprinkler system. They don't have it underground, obviously, because then you can't harvest the food. Right. So this is this this pipe that has like these large wheels and like it's a huge axle is this pipe. And it's how the water is like sprinkled over the crop. And you have to move it. Like two or three times a day. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is like uh, rodents really love hiding in these pipes. Yep. They get inside and they run around. The thing is, the pipe is just too long and it's almost impossible to get them all out. So what you would do is you just turn on the water and eventually just mouse guts everywhere. 
just, just spurt it out. Oh, it's like a it's like a freaking squirt gun of mouse guts. Yeah. So I, I remember the first time that I ever saw that, I was like, "This is the worst thing I've ever seen ever." I, I am now a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like your rite of passage. Is, yeah. Mm, See, ugh. but that was in like what? What was that in like California or something? No, it was in southern Utah. Yeah, like I feel like we should probably keep farms in places where it rains enough to grow to like grow crops, <laughs> or it rains enough to grow them the way that you can grow them with that amount of water. Yeah, it's uh, right, right. Yeah, and 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 the thing is, like, there's obviously better ways to do to farm, right? There's obviously ways you can grow vegetables that don't kill everything that are that are better. There's also ways you can raise cattle that are humane. Like, I remember eating the most delicious steak I've ever had in my life was on a farm out in Oklahoma where they raised cattle on grass. And they were like the happiest cows I've ever met in my entire life. (laughs) Everything on that farm was like just really happy and good. And they didn't they didn't use any sort of chemicals or anything on stuff like that. And they also weren't billionaires like, you know, they weren't (laughs) mega corporate farms, but they they got by. And when they fed me that steak, I could feel all that happiness and that goodness. And and I was like, this cow had it had a good life. And they used to have this saying, like, this cow has one bad day. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? That sounds that sounds that sounds reasonable. And they and they didn't eat like giant steaks every day. You know what I mean? They weren't gluttonous about you know, their meat. If I had the option though, like if I <laughs> someone said you could be happy every day, except for one. I except for know. one. I might consider it. People will just take care of you. They'll wash you and scrub you and feed you. And you get to live on a beautiful field. Sounds good to me. But yeah, I don't know. That's just the thing about veganism is a lot of times it turns into this like, I I have the moral high ground argument. And it's like, you don't, I think in a lot of ways you don't. Um, And if you just want to eat that way, that's cool. I don't have any problem with that. Far be it from me <laughs> to tell people how they should do something like that. But yeah, I just don't understand that belief. I don't know. I can just I can just understand the people who are like, I can't eat anything with a face because they're like, I don't know, some I guess their empathy gland is different than mine or whatever. Like I can understand their viewpoint even though I don't agree with it. Like as evidenced by the fact that one time I ate a pig's hand with pig's head with my bare hands. <laughs> What? <laughs> Have I not told you that? <laughs> we we'll have to talk about that some other time. But let's put that in the bag. It, it, uh, it, was, at a, it was at a Tongan party. So. Oh, okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> oh man, it, it makes me sad that not everyone's ever been to a Tongan party. I know yeah. they, they have oh. pigs' heads that you just tear the face meat off of with your hands. Here's the thing: for those who've never been to a, a Tongan party or any Polynesian party, for that matter. There is just so much food. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is just, I cannot explain it to you. So like, you remember in Hook when they have that imaginary dinner? <laughs> right before they have the food right. fight? That's not even close to how much food they have at a Polynesian <laughs> party. It's like, I've never seen someone make such efficient use of table space. Like, like, it, like stuff is going vertical. It's like hanging off the edge of the table. It's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, it's part of the reason why you eat with your hands because you don't have room on the table for your <laughs> plate. Right. Oh, no. You have to clear a space for yourself before you can put a plate down. Yep. Sounds about right. My question is, what's the design of your personal flag? So, um, like if you had to design a flag for yourself, what, what would be on it? So, um, with the new update with the um, new iPhone OS. It would just be the emoticon of someone flipping someone off. The black background. <laughs> <laughs> That's just all it'd be. It's That's pretty hardcore, bro. Would you just That's... proudly would you proudly fly that like on Oh campus? yeah. Oh, oh yeah, all the time. He's just riding around. He's just riding around Rexburg in a dune buggy, just with a <laughs> middle finger fl- emoji flag. It's but it has to be the emoji. It can't be like any because it's like almost the almost unthreatening. <laughs> way to flip someone off <laughs> is that the emoji I'm just, all I'm picturing right now is like the the deep south where they just have like the confederate flag everywhere but just with the middle finger emoji instead it's, of the confederate flag it's pretty much flag. the same thing I mean just the general <laughs> lee can you imagine that the general lee with the flipping flipping the bird emoji on top instead it, it of the confederate has to be, flag it has to be pixelated mm. too so it looks like I just blew up a picture <laughs> like it's not a phone. vector file it's just a tiny jpeg and yeah. he just blew it up yeah. <laughs>
Uh, that's a pretty good one. What color? What color would the flag be? Um, I want to say it's black, but that's up for you know how I feel throughout the week. Maybe so I almost colors. that's like kind of multi-purpose, right? Because you could you could also be like, oh, this is this is actually a pirate flag. If you well, decide to become a pirate, if I was a pirate, that's also my flag, right? And uh. yeah, so yeah, smart. That's what I would have. S- smart, smart. <laughs> um, my flag would be i i really like over the top stuff um i don't know if you guys have ever noticed that about me what hmm, but <laughs> i i thought like the this is the first thing that came into my head and i don't know if it's the best idea i could come up with but i want to do a um dragon riding a buffalo <laughs> Okay. I think well, I, like, you know, those are different sized things, right? That's like, why it makes it's so sense awesome. It the other way around. It's like, is that a really small dragon or a really big buffalo? I'm going to do a quick <laughs> Google search real quick. There's no way that exists. If that exists, I'm so happy. <laughs> um, but it would be, it would be, um, a red flag with a white circle in the middle. And then the dragon riding a buffalo inside of that inside the circle, but they would kind of go out of the circle. So it would give it kind of a a three dimensional look. Right, right. Yeah. Good, good design principles. Thank you. You Thank you. Good use of those vexillological studies. How many laws are in vexillology? Vexillology. I I can't even keep track. (laughs) Every time I say it, it's just a new number. I'm just like. Let's go with this. Well, every time I spell it, it just gets longer and longer. It just goes, lo, lo, lo. <laughs> dang it. <laughs> I should probably put something in Latin at the bottom of, <laughs> of the, the flag, too, just to give it some extra oomph. <sighs> I'm trying to think of a See, good... This is this is where we wish that we had been educated elsewhere so that we knew Latin. Right, right. I mean, because dead languages are really useful when you want to make jokes about flags. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull up the the Wikipedia article of list of Latin phrases, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just gonna I'm gonna randomly do my mouse and then I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is meant to be because uh, there's no there's no no other way. It is. Delectatio morosa, which is Latin for peevish delight. <laughs> Why that's a phrase <laughs> in Catholic theology, a pleasure taken in sinful thought or imagination, such as brooding on sexual images. It is distinct from sexual desire and involves voluntary and complacent erotic fantasizing without any attempt to suppress such thoughts. Delectatio Morosa Sounds is what it's going to say underneath the dragon riding a buffalo. <laughs> and she just couldn't have made a better phrase. <laughs> just perfect. <laughs> Peevish delight. <laughs> Not to be confused with Turkish delight. Moonlit night. Hold the thing. Not really. It's pretty much the same thing. Did you say moonlit night? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, hey, Adam, what's your answer? Oh, sorry. I was good. Is it just going to be a keyboard? <laughs> no. so, so here here's what i want on my on my flag and you guys you guys can tell me if it's a good idea or a bad idea um so at the bottom i just want to say i'm glad you gave me that permission because i was planning on doing that anyway <laughs> but now that i know i have your approval it makes all the difference now now that you have my approval you're not gonna <laughs> so at the bottom i want there to be a battle tank like kind of a modern one. Mm-hmm. How is that opposed to a regular tank? Um, I don't know. They're just called battle tanks sometimes. Just okay. Let me keep have going. This. Keep going. All right. So at the bottom, there's a tank, and then like next to the tank, there's this dirt pile with <laughs> a giant, like a monster truck, jumping off of it over the tank. Uh huh. And then above that, in the like in the background, like flying towards you, at like kind of a cool angle, is an A10 Warthog, and then underneath, like. Like, and but wait, there's more at, at the very top. There's this banner that just says Veni Vidi Vici <laughs> because I think that's appropriate. <laughs> wow, I really, I really channeled like my inner 10 year old to make this. That's flag. like really aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> would you go to battle with a country that had that flag? You would not. <laughs> I feel like they'd be overcompensating for something, but yeah. I not. feel like I wouldn't go to battle with a country with that flag. But if I went and saw that you were the one like flying that flag in the morning, like you're the one going out and running it up the flagpole, I'd be like, guys, I think we're safe with this one. Let's take them down. <laughs> it's all posture. No, you know, no, they don't have a tank. <laughs> They don't. They don't have a monster truck either. They just, they've just got a. They just got. They got the go kart there, but that's that. <laughs> what happened to monster trucks? Because I feel like they they used to be a more important thing when I was younger. I know they they definitely used to be a more important part of my life. I know that for sure. There was this. Speaking of important parts of my life, there's this Nintendo sixty four game called, um, I think it was Monster Jam, mm. where you just drove monster trucks around a racetrack. I remember that. I remember it was really hard to drive them. Uh, you must have just been bad at the game. What? Okay. <laughs> but I just remember people like used to know the names of monster trucks. You'd be like, oh, that's Bigfoot. Oh, I, s- I still know a couple of the names. There was my favorite one was Goldberg. I I, I went to a, a monster truck. <laughs> Goldberg? What? Yeah, what it was, was he like a wrestler. talent agent or something? <laughs> no, it was named after the wrestler. Or, what? Yeah. Wait, was it? Was there a wrestler named Goldberg? I don't know. Yes. I think there was. And I, oh, I, think there I was. hated that guy. Um, I went to a monster truck rally once and I got this hat signed by a bunch of monster truck drivers. So the Goldberg guy signed it. I think the Gravedigger guy signed it. The Goldberg monster truck has a picture of its go. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to share this in the, the doobly doo. It'll be in the show notes. Sorry. It's got, it says Goldberg on the side. It's painted gold. <laughs> it has, uh, along the roof, uh, like a like a lower back tattoo, like a tribal <laughs> lower back tattoo, Before and then truck. and then the bat and the very far back, um, it's just got a face of Goldberg <laughs> with like a glowing gold aura. It's just screaming. He's just going. <laughs> I love it because it looks like a Corvette that they <laughs> they turned into a monster truck. Oh yeah, right. That's oh wow, huh. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You uh, you got things signed. But there was a <laughs> Gravedigger was another good one. I remember that one. Why were they um, all named after wrestlers? Gravedigger's not a wrestler. No, that's Undertaker. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm thinking of. You can tell I really didn't watch wrestling. Hell in a Cell. Um, you guys ever see that? No? And then somebody who else signed my hat. I didn't even like their monster truck, but they were like in the line or whatever with all the other guys. So it's oh, I, I wasn't going to be like, no, no, no. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> he drove. He drove a monster truck called Taz, which was just the Tasmanian Devil, and it looked Ver- really dumb. boring. Boring. So, yeah. What was that monster truck that was like the big? It turned into a dragon. How was How was Taz boring? He looks like freaking the Tasmanian Devil. Like, are you Are you looking at a picture of him right now? Yeah, because it it looks just kind of dumb. Well, I mean, it's not. I think all monster trucks are dumb, so I don't think that's a great signifier of <laughs> what? importance. Why do you think monster trucks are dumb? Hold on, defend yourself. We just looked at one that was a core. Have you seen the monster truck that's like a a, a Volkswagen um, bug that it's it's actually a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> that's seen pretty one. boss. No, but do you guys remember somebody's gonna? Okay, somebody listening oh, to this. Yeah, that one needs to tell me the name because I can't find it just by googling. But it's a it's a monster truck that turns into like um almost like a like a metallic Godzilla. Like oh, it yeah. stands up what and then it, it like lowers its jaw and it goes like argh, argh, and it blows fire. Oh man. I just Somebody tell us. Tweet tweet that at me. <laughs> I just remembered the most boring, like more boring than Taz, the most mm. boring monster truck. The US Air Force had one and it was called Afterburner. But it, it didn't look like <laughs> I remember a, Afterburner. It didn't look like a plane or anything. It was, it just looked like a truck. It's like <laughs> you can you have a more boring monster truck? It just looks like a truck. Right. It looked like a like a high and tight military like, haircut. Like put in put put some effort in. <laughs> yeah, it didn't yeah. Oh, it just it looks like it looks like they took the van that they took to like <laughs> to school events. Yeah. You know, and just put real big wheels on it. I remember that's lame. <laughs> okay, here's the dragon. I don't know what it's called, but I have a picture of it. Yeah! I just remember there would be these well, that's ads. Not a, that's not even a monster truck. No, that's it just, turns into robot. that from a monster truck. It's I don't amazing. Think it does. No, it really does. 
<laughs> I just remember seeing ads for it all the time. They'd be like, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know if it was a monster truck, but it'd pick up trucks and then eat them or set them on fire, which was awesome. I can't even focus. I don't even want to do a podcast anymore. I just want to like browse <laughs> the, the monster truck wiki. <laughs> Because, of course, there's a monster truck with It's you. called the Megasaurus Rex. <laughs> Megasaurus Rex! That's it. So good. Man, what even... Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Can we just, can we just stop this and have a podcast about monster trucks? <laughs> that's, that's like our target demo. So <laughs> if you, like, that's really what we... We've been buying Facebook ads, yeah. and we've just been saying, interest, monster trucks. <laughs> we, we, need, we need to get, like, a... F- one of those, like a physical ad, just like on a foam block at Monster Jam. <laughs> no, we no. just need to get our own monster truck I think with that's our faces like the, on. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's like the best advertising ever. <laughs> Can somebody would, Photoshop our faces onto a monster truck? That's amazing. <laughs> oh, what would the name of our monster truck be? Um, the Inquisitor. <laughs> the that's Inquisitor, it. <laughs> where it's like dressed like a like an eighteenth century Catholic priest or something, like <laughs> or sixteenth century. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's like it's just dressed like it has a cape and a hat and everything <laughs> like it's just dressed like a cardinal <laughs> oh well sorry to miss you our our catholic listeners <laughs> yeah we've, so, we've given her a tough time today apologize for that but remember <laughs> delictatio morosa hey so my question is what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you while at work Aaron all right so Technically, this didn't happen to me while I was at work. It happened to me immediately before I returned from my lunch break. Which is probably the best time something crazy to happen. <laughs> because I walked in and I saw this, like the looks on everyone's faces and I knew something was wrong. So me and my buddy worked as we were screen printers and we were in the back making t-shirts and they'd hired this guy named Ricky who was he was a little bit younger than us like maybe he was like 20 19 and he was like uh he's like <laughs> i mean he was a lifeguard oh nice he he was in a band that did uh like reggae um what else can i tell you about ricky that was just like he's just like a he seems he seems like a chill guy he was really chill but he's also kind of squirrely like he was kind of a hustler. He's one of those people who had like eight side gigs. If like he that always makes had a sense. scheme going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Ricky was always trying to do stuff that were like, no, 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 Ricky, don't, no, 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 put that down. No, like we'd come in and we'd just find him like gluing things together. Why are you doing that, Ricky? <laughs> like he was, it was just like a kid. You couldn't leave him alone. He was always going to get toddler. into trouble. <laughs> yeah, little Ricky. Um. <laughs> So every day at lunch, me and my boss, who I worked with, would go to Costco to get to get either a hot dog or pizza, right? Or both sometimes, right? Or both. Sometimes you get a slice and a dog. You know what I'm saying? Because the dog always comes with a drink. And so you're like, oh, shit, that's a good deal. Yeah, it is. And um, then we'd go back to work, except for on Fiesta Fridays when we had to get Mexican food, obviously. Because <laughs> it's well, Fiesta I mean, Fridays. You have to honor the alliteration. Yeah. Uh. So this, this, this week we came back in and everyone just looked, they, everyone looked like they just, sh- like they all just pooped their pants. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Like guys, we got to question three before we started mentioning poop. Like <laughs> they were equal parts, like relieved and scared. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? So my, my. My buddy ran up up to the office and was like, what happened? And they're like, Ricky happened. <laughs> <laughs> what did Ricky do? <clears throat> well, <laughs> Ricky was bored up at the front desk because he would be the guy that when customers came in at the front desk, you know, to order shirts, there's like a counter with shirts and examples and how help them pick out stuff. He's the guy they'd see, right? Right. Well, he got bored sitting up there and there was nothing for him to do. So obviously he got into trouble and he started just opening up drawers. <laughs> he really is just a toddler. He is. He started opening up drawers and looking through cabinets and things like that. And underneath the cash register. Okay. Actually, I can't, I can't, 
criticize that too much because that's exactly what I do when I'm bored. <laughs> you start opening, opening things. things. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you probably wouldn't do this because he opened up the drawer beneath the cash register and he found a handgun. Oh. Now, Why they kept a- <laughs> they kept a handgun because their office was in an industrial part in a bad part of town. And they'd had problems with sketchy people coming in thinking like people that are like on like PCP thinking they're going to come in and get rob them. Or they didn't really have anything, but they just had these incidents. So the owners of the business were kind of, um, I don't know, the kind of people who would have a handgun underneath the register. <laughs> or a handgun was the answer. <laughs> yeah. So, so Ricky found the handgun. <laughs> and where most people would be like, oh, and shut the thing <laughs> or go up and ask him, be like, uh, you guys have a handgun here? No, he didn't do that. He took the handgun out and started playing with it. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he started spinning it on his finger <laughs> like like a Western guy oh, try, trying to do a quick draw. And then oh, he, that wasn't enough for Ricky. Oh, he was no. like, I wonder what would happen if I took this pointed it into this trash can and shot it. (laughs) He did. Bang! (laughs) He shot a gun in the store into the trash can. Scared the living daylights out of everyone else who was in the offices. And right after that happened, we walked in. (laughs) I knew something smelled sulfury in the air. Like, it's, it's like someone shoot fireworks in here. There's a there's a good chance that Ricky's not alive anymore. <laughs> just anywhere. I just don't imagine his story continuing after that. Yeah, well, I don't know what happened to Ricky, but it probably is interesting. So that's probably the craziest thing that ever happened to me at work. Oh my gosh. Good one. Yeah. Just if you find oh a gun, God. don't shoot it. <laughs> probably Inside. a good rule. Yeah, and just like why would they have a handgun and not tell anybody that it was there? <laughs> well, like, what's yeah. The point of it? I mean, to be fair, these are the kind of people who owned a t-shirt company for years and yeah. they came downstairs one day. They were designing a t-shirt to ask me, hey, what colors do you mix to get green? <laughs> I was like, Whoa, OK, so it was an interesting place. I can kind of see why they wouldn't tell Ricky, though, that there was a handgun. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Yeah. In that situation, do you tell Ricky or do you not tell Ricky? Because it's Ricky. You know what I mean? What's he going to do? There's, there's always a Ricky. There's always a Ricky. There's always a handgun. Metaphorically. Sometimes literally. So my story is not nearly so good. So <laughs> Sorry. If you're listening, you just stop now, I guess. Unless Andrew's story is good. It might be. But, uh. Like, it was really hard for me to think of an answer because I'm an editor, and so nothing happens at work other than, like, oh, a comma should go here. Yay! And, like, it's exciting for me, but no. Hey, guys! Knows. It's an emergency! We're out of red pens! <laughs> guys! Guys! I put a semicolon in here! Guys! Guys! Did you hear <laughs> They put a laurel on your head and carry you around <laughs> on your shoulders. <laughs> carry you around the office like Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... I, I remembered that when I was like 15, I was a referee for youth soccer, which pays well. And I'm not talking about bribes, like <laughs> legitimately pays well. Right. But um, I was also playing soccer and my coach who I played for also coached another younger team than the, co- than the team that, he, that I played on. And they had like missed a game and needed to reschedule or something. And so they talked to like the local complex or whatever. And the referee assigner was basically like, okay, you guys can play or whatever, but you have to find your own referee. And he knew that I was a referee. So he came to me and he was like, Hey, can you do this for me? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like that's an extra 20 bucks or whatever. I'll do it. Before we go on, I just had a question. Uh huh. Did you play soccer or were you just only ever a soccer ref? I did both. Okay. So, so I was I, worried you were a soccer ref, but you never played soccer. No, no, I, I did. I did I'm worried part. slash kind of excited to make fun of you for it. No, <laughs> no. Okay, go ahead. Um, you can still make fun of me. There's still plenty of mockable things about being a soccer referee. Number one, I think, is the socks. Anyway, so yeah, so I I played and I refed at the same time, and the person I played for had another team, and 
he had to reschedule one of his games. And so he asked me to, he asked me to referee it. So I went there and so it was basically like my coach and his team versus just some out of town people. So I was there and that was the only one. And so I had to get like people from the sidelines to like, tell me when the ball was out of bounds or whatever. And it was going fine. Um, and I was only like 15 or 14 or whatever. And so I'd, I'd made some, a couple of mistakes because I was the only one there and I didn't have anybody who was actually a ref backing me up or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but a couple of times, like I had missed the subs cause I was trying to watch too many things. And so the other coach, the opposing team, um, I guess I shouldn't say opposing team cause I wasn't on one of the teams, but the, the coach mm-hmm. I didn't know, Bias. <laughs> the, coach, <laughs> the coach I didn't know when I, I, I missed the subs one time. And then like the next time the ball went out, the coach I didn't know was like, Hey, Hey, we got subs. And so I looked and I waved him on. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Come on. Um, and then for some reason, the coach that I played for took exception to that because he thought that that coach was yelling at me. Mm -hmm. And so my coach started yelling at the other coach about how the other coach shouldn't yell at me. (gasps) Oh no. And then they, and the other coach is like, what's the situation here? Yeah. The other coach was like, I wasn't yelling at him. And then they like, then they both just, I mean, keep in mind, this is, this is a game of like 10 year olds, like 10 and 11 year olds and their parents. How old are these players? Yeah, they're like, they're like 10, right? And so then they start, like, the coaches start yelling at each other about, I don't even remember what, but they start just like cursing and like, they start like squaring up to each other. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, the person that I had on the sideline for me to like tell me when the ball was out, like, went and grabbed one of them and the other guy grabbed the other one of them. And they were just, I was just like, you guys need to leave. Like, get out of here. And so I ended up having to eject my own coach from a game. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, man. I really yeah. like to think that you were 10 when this was happening, too. No, no, no. I was like 14. <laughs> so <laughs> not really that much more mature. But <laughs> That reminds me of one time where I we were, play- <laughs> we were playing basketball and the refs were so bad. And they just kept calling fouls on our team when we weren't really doing anything. Yeah. And our coach got so pissed off that he got kicked out. <laughs> but we were like 10. <laughs> we're like, what do we do? Like, who's yeah. in charge now? Because we didn't have an assistant coach. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was just it was pretty much okay. the same. And so, like, because he because he got kicked out, like, he was suspended for a couple more games, like, for a couple weeks. And so I had to go to practice after that. <laughs> and everybody was like, Hey, where's coach? And it's like, well, <laughs> um, uh, it's kind of my fault. He's not here a little bit. <laughs> so one of my favorite things ever is my dad used to the coach basketball for high school and he once got ejected out of the game and it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but here's, here's what happened. Like, so I, it was actually, it was, it was even my game. Like he was even coaching that game, but my coach got kicked out because of the call <laughs> or something like that. And so my dad's like, Oh shoot, I'll jump down and I'll coach the rest of this game. And then he gets kicked out. Wow. <laughs> and, then the, and then the principal comes down. He's like, okay, I'll coach. And then finished off the game. We lost, but it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what, what's your uh, craziest okay. thing that happened at work? So um, this is when I was working at a pizza place. Um, and this pizza place was more of like a pub slash sports place pizza there, wings, things. I didn't say a sentence, but you got the idea. Mm. Um, the problem... With Can we talk about? I actually was thinking about their pastrami pizza today. Oh man! I was like, mm, it's so good, it's so good. For those who don't know, it is a pizza with what kind of cheese? It was it just regular? It was a mix between mozzarella and from two different places. That was super good. And then it had pastrami, mm-hmm. and it had pickles. Yep, and, and mustard. Then- Mustard on it. It was, and that sounds weird and gross, but it is so good. <laughs> so good. All right, sorry. I'm just okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wipe the slab off my mouth. <laughs> anyway, so the problem with working at a place that um, shows sporting events and also serves alcohol is that people get drunk quite as easily. <laughs> well, also these are people who live in a place with what's the population of of that? Just like two or three thousand. <laughs> it's really small, so it's like it's small. They're not going to go anywhere else. They're going to go to that like, place, <laughs> and they're going to stay there the entire sporting event. Yeah, and they're going to get loud. And anyway, so this one guy was. Um, he was uh he was enjoying himself a little bit too much mm-hmm. and he uh he was quite inebriated 
and he ordered a pizza and it he was not coming to him as quickly as he was hoping for. Mm. I don't remember how long. It might have been long. I don't remember, but he was upset. And he started yelling at us and at my boss's wife. And then my boss looks at me and he says, come with me. And we went out there and <laughs> grabbed him and threw him out. Like literally like, like a cartoon. Like, we, like, like, it went, like whoop. the thing about people who are inebriated is they're not very good at like their body movement or any like, <laughs> and so it was just like, it was, it was one quick motion. Just, I grabbed one leg in his shoulder and he grabbed one leg in the shoulder and we just walked out and just threw him out. <laughs> and I, I remember like this is the greatest I've never done this and I'll never ever do this again this is amazing don't you wish there were more circumstances in life where you could do that same thing oh yeah just I'm done throw them out <laughs> well because there's there's no case in which someone is totally at fault yeah when it was one person is drunk and the other person isn't like it's not like you can be like at that soccer game of Adams and you know the one person just picks up the other coach like oh we're getting you out of here and throw them out <laughs> The, the, the st- stupid part was, is I worked the next morning and he called the health inspectors out and they're like, yeah, we know this guy was drunk. He was just upset, but we have to still do the health inspection. <laughs> like that, <laughs> was his re- that was his revenge is that I have this, <laughs> this middle management government employee <laughs> come and look at our <laughs> restaurant. Stupid. Yeah. So that's it. Mm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I haven't been able to focus ever since I started thinking about pastrami pizza. It's so good. I've 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 kind of been out of it since we started talking about monster trucks. <laughs> what what if what if you had a monster truck and inside you could eat a pastrami pizza while you're driving it? What if what if you started a pizza chain but all of the delivery drivers drove monster trucks? What if it was a food truck but it was a monster truck food truck? Um um a monster truck food truck or a monster food truck? Mm. I think a monster truck food truck. Monster truck food truck. Food truck monster truck. <laughs> and then it turns into a dragon and a roast for pizza. What? <laughs> I'm just imagining this pizza place now. Like your pizza would never be late because it's like, oh no, I'm stuck in traffic. Just kidding. I drive a monster truck. <laughs> just kidding. I smashed 400 cars on my way here. <laughs> the cars became my highway. Hey, do you have a tip and also somewhere for me to hide from the <laughs> You don't happen to have like a whole stand or real tall trees I can high five to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, thanks for listening. Remember, your ratings fuel us. So go to 3g3q.co slash rate and leave your review. You can subscribe to receive new episodes the moment they're released by going to 3g3q.co slash subscribe. We'd also love to hear from you or receive uh, Photoshop pictures of our monster truck or our flags. So where can people get a hold of you? Um, I'm on Twitter at A underscore Sav. Um... I'm always there. I will always get your messages. And I just realized, like, how are they going to Photoshop our faces on things if no one knows what our faces look like? <laughs> just put the, just put like the three stooges, three random people. Just, like. <laughs> people don't know what you look like. Oh, is that, that's true, huh? I figure everyone knows what I look like because I'm an internet meme. That's true. What happens if I search for Andrew Savage? Oh, you'll find the guy that was on Survivor like 10 years ago. <sighs> Andrew Savage. Andrew Savage, not Survivor. <laughs> Still the survivor guy. Come on. To be fair though, he's he was in pretty good shape back then, so yeah. Um when you when you when you Google image search Adam Anderson, uh yeah, that's that's me. That's totally me. If you do Andrew W. Savage, you get a lot of old time you guys. That's what I look like. Wait, a- a- <laughs> Adam Anderson and their song. Um, who is this? <laughs> you it's me. This. What are you talking about? This looks like a, a Ukrainian male model. <laughs> are, are you suggesting I, I, I am Ukrainian? Oh my gosh. Okay. The first, the second, the first hit I get for Adam Anderson is Cornell University Human Bio- Ecology. The second is Adam Anderson, parentheses, monster truck driver. Oh yeah. I see that. <laughs> he's, he, he's, uh... The oh, wait, he drove the, the Taz. Who drives, who drives Grave Digger. Oh, yeah, he does. I forgot. Oh, he, dri- wow. he drove the Taz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so anyhow, sorry. Um, I'm I'm on Twitter at Aaron L. M. Goodwin. Or you can just do a web search for Napoleon. What is the um? Oh, what was it? Was it Napoleon Dynamite something nerd? Napoleon Dynamite nerd. 
yeah, just do a Google search for that. Napoleon Dynamite Nerd. And, um... That's not coming up anymore. Well, whatever. <laughs> oh, I never said my Twitter handle. Oh, what is I, it? I, I don't care. Okay, sweet. If you do a Google image search for nerd, I'm one, two, three, four, five, six down in the plaid shirt. So that's me in the in the URL tie. Okay. Uh, other than, other than that, I gotta find the show notes again. Um, <laughs> I just want to say goodbye. I want you to remember that uh, veganism is a crock. Um, oh, I'm gonna get in so much trouble. I want you to remember. I want you to remember that it's pronounced. Vexalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal